Uh, we've been talking about these impacts to ourselves, but to our community lately. And I'm excited about seeing what we do with these words uh, in our families, uh, in our communities, uh, in our church. And so it's just an exciting time. So I just want us to, to rest in the Lord this morning, to, just, just to be at peace with Him. I know we've all got problems and we've all got concerns and, and, and just issues outside of these doors. But just to be able to come in here and just let down your hair a little bit and then just say, God, you know what? You're bigger than that world out there. And uh, I'm here for you. And we're going to start this week off right. And we're going to just honor you in that. So, yeah, excited about being here this morning? Yeah. Amen. So am I. We're going to... We're going to open up this morning in prayer, and we're going to ha have Don France come up and start us off in a song. And, uh, but I want you guys to just, I, I mean it, drop the, the, the bondage, drop the baggage right now. As we pray, say, God, I'm handing this over to you. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to walk in here this morning. God, you've given us the strength. You've, given, you've woke us up this morning. You've allowed us to come in here. And Father, some of us came in here maybe even a little reluctantly. But you have us here. So God, help us just drop us. Drop our agenda. Drop our isms. Drop our um, looking around and thinking about everybody else. God, just let us be between you and us. So God, this morning we just empty ourselves of ourselves. And God, we honor you. And we praise you. And we glorify you. Thank you for helping us start this week off the way it should be. Glorifying you. And honoring you. So God, I pray for a blessing upon the service. I pray a blessing upon the, the tithes and the offering. I pray a blessing upon our hearts. A blessing upon uh, everything that's done here today. The teachers, the kids. God, help our hearts be open and receptive to you. And God, we will give you honor today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Good morning. Are we working? Yeah, we are. Good. <laughs> this song I picked this morning um, is a song that Mercy Me wrote. It came out last year. And, you know, there's a song every now and then that when it comes out, it's like, ah, you wrote this song just for me. You know they didn't, but they did. <laughs> this is that song. They say sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some. Right now, right now I'm losing bad. I've stood on this stage night after night, reminding the people it'll be alright. But right now, Oh, right now I just can't It's easy to sing when there's nothing to bring me down What can I say when I'm held to the flame like I am right now? I know you're able and I know you can Save through the fire with your mighty hand But even if you don't My hope is you alone Something To move a mountain Good thing a little faith is all I have right now. But God, if you choose to leave mountains unmovable, oh, give me the strength to be able to say, it is well with my soul. I know you're able and I know you can. Say through the fire with your mighty hand But even if you don't My hope is you alone I know you're able and I know you can Say through the 
But even if you don't, my hope is you alone. You've been faithful, you've been good all my days. I will trust in you, oh Lord, come what may, cause I know you're able. And I know you can. I know you're able, and I know you can save through the fire with your mighty hand. Cause even if you don't, my hope is you alone. I know the sorrow, and I know the hurt would all go away. If you just say the word, but even if you don't, my hope is you alone. Yes, it is, Lord Jesus. It is well. With my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul. Man, thank you, Don. Uh, I was just talking to somebody yesterday about um, uh, making some mistakes, and and uh, uh, and as Don was up there, I was thinking, you know, he came in a little bit late at one time, and I was thinking sometimes we get frustrated. But the person I was talking to yesterday, we were talking about how this is all just practice, anyways, yeah. right? Yeah. This is just practice. We're just we're going to worship with everything in us, and sometimes we are going to fail. Sometimes we're going to make mistakes, and it's it's almost more precious when you do because we realize that it's not about down here. It's going to be where we're going. And that's going to be the special songs, and, and that's when it's going to be what, what all this practice is about, right? And we're going to enjoy heaven so much. So once again, thank you, Don, and thank you, Destiny Family of Faith, for coming today. And even the video, we never talk about the video enough, but, uh, you know, a lot of you guys need to realize there is a video if you go to uh, YouTube, Destiny Family of Faith. And I want you guys to know on the video, I think the camera adds about 30 pounds. I don't really look like this. <laughs> oh, but I love that we can come into the house of God and laugh a little bit. I love that we can be who we are. I love that I can come in here with mistakes. And we're going to talk about some mistakes today. And, and, uh, and our heart can demean us sometimes. And God's greater than our heart. And we're going to bring up that scripture today. And I thank God that all the mistakes I make, they're covered. I thank God that because I'm in Him, I can be up here and laugh a little and make a few mistakes, and I can go out there and not condemn myself when I mess up, or I say something stupid, or I look foolish, because God is greater than my heart and my mind. He's greater than me. So we're going to rest in His strength today. And you know, I wrote down one scripture to get us going this morning. If God is for us, who can be against us? In Romans 8.31. Yes. Think about that. If God is for you, what chance does this world have against you? Do you rest in that strength? I want us to have confidence in that strength. Because our impact word today is confidence that the ba Baileys had generously given us this morning. And I get the opportunity to talk about it. Kyle doesn't want to take any credit whatsoever, so he's going to point to Carrie. It's all Carrie. Um, so as we get started this morning, uh, as the worship team comes... Uh, they're going to finish, and we want the kids to stay in after they finish because we're going to have communion with the kids today, and then we're going to release. So maybe we'll say some announcements and little things afterwards, but right now we are going to drop our agendas. We're going to focus on God. We're going to have communion with each other, and we are going to serve God this morning. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Awesome. Everybody want to stand and uh, worship with us this morning? And I want to hear more of you than I hear more of me. So does everybody else. <laughs> Oh. 
those words touch you today, but I know uh, many of my friends are dealing with fear, with fear, and it's something that can, and can come in and out of your life, but these words are so, so true. I'm no longer a slave to fear, and fear can, is something that can invade your mind, and it um, can, can pervade everything you do in your life, and you have to remember that you're no longer a slave to it, because God, God died for us all, and he took that away. You're a, child of, you're a child of God. So if you don't have family that you feel like you are a close part of, you're a member of God's family. And he has taken that fear from you. So let him do it. Let him do it. Amen.
took a breath to breathe your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. In all the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God, Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God When I was your
don't deserve it Still you give yourself away Father, I just thank you so much this morning. Because God, like the song says, you chased me down. God, because I ran from you. I knew I was unworthy. I, I ran. And you, you came after me, God. You were there the whole time waiting for me to turn. God, I thank you so much for your undying love. I thank you so much for uh, just being there when nobody else was. I thank you so much for just allowing me to love God. And I can only do that because you first love me. Father, as we stand here today, we stand in honor of you, thanking you, God, that because we were too unworthy to come to you, you came down to us. Father, I thank you. We honor you this morning. God, the song's already preached the sermon. We were unworthy. God, you, you, you came to us, God. God, we are no longer slaves to fear. Your love overcomes this world. So God, we praise you this morning. We honor you this morning. We give you all authority in our lives. God, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. We took that kingdom and it came and we put it right in our hearts. God, be on the throne of our hearts this morning. God, let us honor you with our hearts wide open and exposed before you. Father, knowing that we're not perfect, we make mistakes in life, but God, you're there every time for us. We thank you for you. So God, we just pray for your blessing upon this service, upon our hearts and upon our lives. Help us be the examples that you want us to be. And help us leave here today with it, what you want us to receive. Not what we came in. Forget our expectations. But God, fill us with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated. And again, we're going to have communion in just a second. Uh, and the kids, please stay in. Um, all right, our servers are leaving. Kyle, you ready? Hey, hey, we ready? I don't know if uh, I, I get to embarrass him enough, but when I first started preaching here, he would give me this little zipper thing just to make me go. <laughs> So if you guys can pick on him in any way, he's my brother in Christ. It's okay. <laughs> um. Can you guys hear me without the microphone? No, no, no. I'm telling you, my hands are cold. I got to be able to keep one of my hands in my pocket. It's, ugh. all right. Um, let's pray this morning. Uh, Lord, we just thank you uh, for letting us come together this morning in your house. Lord, thank you for letting us live in a free country where we can worship you. Uh, Lord, we thank you so much for all the people that have sacrificed for that. Uh, Lord, we're just so grateful for you, and uh, we're just honored that we're children of God. And uh, we just thank you, Jesus. Amen. So, um, Friday night, Matt Taylor and I, we got to go uh, be officials or judges at the District 3 FFA Leadership Contest down at Carroll. And um, we were both in FFA. It's, it's a pretty neat deal. You know, you, you get there and you see so many kids who are serious about their life and know where they want to go with their life. And uh, it just it brought back a lot of memories. And uh, getting to the point that my kids are getting in there now, and, and uh, just happy to see that. But uh, I got to judge a, a contest called Ag Sales. And um, in the Ag Sales contest, there's 
There's five keys that you need to have down to, to be able to do good in this contest. And first off, you need to know your product. Know what you're talking about, know what you're selling. Know your info and your props. You know, these kids were giving a sales pitch to me and I'm asking them different questions and you'd have to see some of them, boy, they didn't know where that information was or they didn't know what their stuff said. The other thing they needed to have was confidence in their self and in the product they're selling. They need to share how their product has improved the lives of their customers. And one key to this contest is at some point during this sale, I have to turn them down. It's not for me. And they need to keep selling that product to me. So um, they, they just need to keep coming back to you. Is this something you're interested in? Is this something you're interested in? So after the evening concluded and we were driving home, and I was talking to Colton and and uh, I'm kind of a metaphor person. So it kind of dawned on me how much this contest was like our, you know, being a Christian. We need to know our product. We need to know Jesus. Um, Peter wrote in 2 Peter 1, 2, Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. Next thing we need to do is we need to know your info and your props. That's pretty easy. Know your Bible. Know your personal stories of grace and healing. We need to have confidence in yourself and the product. If I claim that Jesus is my Lord and Savior and He has made me new, I need to not only talk the talk but walk the walk. Personal side note here. I was thinking this. Right, I was going through my stuff last night. I think that's why we've had so many people drift away from, from Christ. So many people have grown up seeing how mom and dad, their neighbors, their family, and their friends live their lives inside a church and how they live our lives outside a church. We need to walk the walk and talk the talk all the time. Especially as parents, we need to remember it's not just God who's watching our every move. As parents, we need to be the ones that disciple our kids. That's the most important person we need, or people we need to disciple, is in our kids. Next, we need to share how the product has improved our lives. Share what's God, what God has done for me. Mark mentioned uh, Philippians 4.13. And we all know that 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But if we go back to 12, this is what sticks out to me. This is the important part. I know what it is to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, and whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. next thing we need to do is ask if the product is something you want. We can do this by simply setting the example with our own lives. Thank you. And most importantly, praying for others. We've all been in those situations. Somebody comes into us and, and uh, you know, I've had that happen the last couple of weeks. Somebody tells me something and well, I'm working on a horse and I don't know. It's just happened a couple times. It, it kind of dawned on me afterwards. I wasn't really listening to what they were saying. And I thought, boy, that person really needed prayer. And it really kicked me in the tail because I didn't take the time to, to listen to what they were saying and know that they needed prayer. But when you have that person come across that, that needs that prayer, you need to understand God brings those people in those lives or into our lives many times. And the same prayer that they need is the same prayer that we need. We receive just as much blessing as what they will. I don't mean to compare God to a product, but like I said, it just kind of dawned on me how it's all kind of the same thing. So, um, Before we partake to communion, uh, I just want to ask if anybody doesn't know Jesus as their personal Savior, uh, let's just take a few seconds here, just bow your heads, and, and it's real simple. You just say, Lord, I, I just turn it over to you. 
I want you to be in my life, Lord. I surrender to you. The Lord, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake. This cup is the new covenant of my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's partake. Lord, we just thank you so much for, for loving us, Lord. Many times we just feel ungrateful, unworthy. Um, but Lord, you're, you just you sent your son to die for us, Lord. Help us just remember that sacrifice. Help us to be that example to others who are just going through many different things. And Lord, like I said, help us just to be an example to, to not only our kids, but everybody else outside these walls, Lord. Help us to be real. Help us to show your face. We're just grateful for all you do for us. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. one another. Let's dismiss the kids. If you're new to Destiny, we have Sunday school in the back. We have nursery in the back. So feel free to send your kids back there or walk them back so you get a little comfort level about it. We'll just love on somebody for a little bit. Thank you, Kyle. Great job. Have you ever seen the world? Good morning. Hey, I just wanted to let you know that um, I know the next couple weeks get busy, um, spring break start and all that good stuff, but Easter is coming. Easter is coming, April 1st. So the next, um, next two Sundays after church, if you want to help me lead worship on Easter, um, I would love to have you. It's going to be kind of like a choir format, so if you would like to sing in the Easter choir, we would love to have you after church the next two Sundays for about an hour. It won't take long. Thanks. Oscar, you and Janie come up here for a second. And Miss Maya, did she leave? Oh, there she is. We, uh, we've got a, a special couple here. I don't know, come on up here guys. I don't know if you recognize them or not, but this is Amanda Baugh's uh, lead guitar player. He was. He played his last concert with them last evening. Oh, don't go, oh. Jim's back there going, yay. This precious couple uh, came from Mexico uh, just to come to the United States of America and, and just learn and grow and gain support 
for a mission. They're, they're called to go back to Mexico. Um, has Oscar picked up any English at all much? Or a little bit. Just a little bit. It's a little embarrassing, but yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> Not too bad. Not too bad. But they, uh, they emailed me and, and asked if we could meet. And uh, I've, I put them off and put them off and put them off. Just we've been just way too busy. But uh, we were blessed to see them last night and get to hear them perform. And uh, they're, they're going to be taken off soon. So uh, why don't you just take a, a minute here and share your heart with them, whichever one of you uh, wants to, to talk. And um, what I'd like to do, church, we're going to adopt this couple as one of our missions. And uh, what I'd like you to do today as you give your tithes, uh, if you have a little bit extra to put in the offering, I want you to mark it, uh, Jenny or Oscar, uh, Mexico, just mark it. And uh, we're going to bless them uh, before they leave. But... Um, they're, they're just a precious couple, and they've come, they're going, they're leaving America to go back to a, a country that's just really depressed, uh, a lot of Catholicism, uh, there are some witchcraft, just all kinds of demonic things going on there. And you know what is so cool, what, what blesses me more than anything with a missionary is when they can enter the United States of America and be contaminated by our materialism, but yet desire to go back to their country and sacrifice to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's unbelievable. They're going to sacrifice. So I just want Juan Oscar to share his heart quick here, and then we're going to pray with Maya too. Okay, I'm, usually I try to, to speak English, but it's very slow, so my wife can translate very quickly. Uh, yeah, we are very... I'm speaking English. You do what you do. You just... <laughs> We've been really happy with the time God gave us here in the U.S. The call that God put on my heart was very clear. Many people ask us, how is it that one decides to be a missionary? We haven't had time to study every case. Pero en mi caso no tuve opción. But in my case, I didn't have an option. Tú siempre puedes decir que no. You can always say no. Pero fue muy claro lo que Dios me, me puso en mi vida. But what God put in my life was very clear. Yo no podía dormir en las noches desde chiquito. Ever since I was a young boy, I couldn't sleep at night. Desde que me acuerdo, desde los tres años. From three years on, as far back as I remember. Era tormentado por demonios. Because all night I was tormented by demons. En mi familia eh, practicaban brujería. My family practiced witchcraft. Mi mamá era atea. My mom was an atheist. Eh, no conocía a mi papá. I never met my dad. Y tuve dos padrastros. And I had two horrible stepdads. Alcoholics, violent guys. And the enemy always said to me, why don't you just take your life? No one cares. Y era un pensamiento que me atormentaba. And that's a thought that tormented me. And I was always depressed. Y un día a los 14 años le dije, Dios, si tú me salvas, si, si tú me muestras que es real, te voy a dar mi vida. And one day when I was about 14, I said, God, if you're real, and if you show me you're real, I'm going to give you my life. Y un día una persona me compartió el Evangelio. One day someone shared the gospel with me. Y ese es el tema de que yo pensaba toda mi vida que era una víctima. That's the, the thing here. All my life I thought I was a victim. Y el Espíritu Santo me mostró que yo era pecador. And the Holy Spirit showed me that I was a sinner. Y que tenía que pedir perdón a Dios. And that I needed to ask God for forgiveness. Y reconciliarme con Él. And reconcile myself with Him. Y entonces entendí el Evangelio. And that's when I understood the Gospel. La gracia de Dios. And God's grace. Y el día que yo recibí a Cristo. The day I received Christ. Pude, pude experimentar esa paz inexplicable. I, uh, I experimented that, that peace that las caderas, las we can't understand. Rotas, and my chains were broken. Y mi vida empezó a, a, a and my life started to change. 
Y yo le había prometido a Dios que si él me mostraba que era verdad, le iba a seguir. I had told God that if you showed me you were real, I would serve you with my life. Así que empecé a ser un misionero desde los 15 años. So ever since I was 15, I started to be a missionary. Eh, aunque yo no sabía lo que era. Even though I didn't know what that was, really. Pero realmente fue de tiempo completo y fue inmediato. But it really was a full time and it was immediate. Y fue el que me fue poniendo en los lugares y capacitando. And he just placed me in the places I needed to go and I grew as I went. Estudié en, en Argentina cuatro años. Dios me mostró que tenía que prepararme. I went to a Bible Institute in Argentina for four years to prepare myself. Y, y uh -huh. a mi and that's where I met Jenny. Uh, y después de tres intentos ella me dijo que sí. After three tries she said yes. <laughs> And I pray a lot. So if you if you want to pray for you, I'm the right person, because because this is a um, miracle, miracle. Because I, I I pray for around six years, and the first two times she say no, I I'm very busy right now, and okay, but I still. We had a good friendship, didn't we? I didn't want to ruin that. <laughs> so, eh, después de casarnos estuvimos sirviendo en México. After we got married, we stayed in Mexico and served there. Ayudamos a fundar una iglesia. We helped with a church plant that a friend had started. Eh, Dios está haciendo una obra gigante en México. God's doing a big work in Mexico right now. Uh, y, y nuestro corazón ahora es regresar y seguir ayudando. And right now our hearts desire to go back and help with this. Entonces, estén orando por nosotros y gracias por esta. So, Hoy veníamos please de be visita. praying for us. No esperábamos esto y fue so una today we just sorpresa. Came by to visit. We didn't expect to see you all like this, but it's a good surprise. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, they've written on their, uh, their brochure, our desire is to return to Mexico to fulfill the calling God has placed on our hearts to train leaders to serve and teach, serve within the local church, and mobilize leaders and teams to reach the people of Mexico for Christ. And I am hoping and praying that they can get us a trip organized and we'll be down there soon. They've got to find good food that won't make us sick. <laughs> and I trust Jenny will do that. And Miss Maya, she's leaving for Guatemala Tuesday. So uh, she's going to be down in that area of the country and uh, serving Jesus and, and just doing all kinds of things. So I want us to stretch our hands toward uh, uh, these, uh, these precious people that are, have been called to the missions field. Uh, God will use them. He's going to open doors that no man can open and close doors that no man can close. They're gonna, he, God's going to give them the desires of their heart. I just know it and can feel it. Uh, they've taken time to prepare and that is necessary and God it's time for them to go and, and touch Mexico like it's never been touched before and, and I know God's going to use you both to do that. So let's, uh, let's just stretch our hands toward these precious people and, and commission them. Father, we, uh, we just come to you in the name of Jesus because we can. What a precious privilege it is to pray in the name of Jesus. And Lord, that's Oscar and Jenny's heart is to go to Mexico and share Jesus Christ with whomsoever will listen. Lord, you've died for every person on this earth and those to be born. And, and uh, Lord, uh, they just need to hear the gospel. And this couple will head back. I pray that you will supply every need they have. There will be no lack. You'll put leadership and, and people in their place to do ministry. And Lord, it will flourish like it's never flourished before. The fields are white for the harvest. The workers are few and Oscar and Jenny have committed to do that very thing for you, Lord. And as Maya heads to uh, Guatemala, I just ask in Jesus' name uh, to cover that whole team. Uh, you provide travels for uh, both these uh, uh, precious people um, that head to Guatemala and to head to Mexico. Lord, we just thank you and praise you and give you all the glory and the honor that you would trust people like us to do your, your, your special work. 
And we're going to thank you. We're going to praise you. We're going to give you glory and honor for all you're going to do through these people. And we do it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Love y'all. Thank you, Mark. You are welcome. That is awesome. Probably three o'clock. Yeah, so there's a time change. Don't worry about it. <laughs> It'll seem like it's only three or four hours now. But that was awesome. I was thinking, wow. I prayed for a wife one day. and She does all talking for me now, too. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I will pay dearly for that. <laughs> Uh, but what an honor, what a blessing. Thank you guys for coming today and, and, and for what you guys do. We're so proud of um, just being able to see and, um, and Destiny take on a, on a partnership with that is so, so important to me too because I know that we have touched all parts of this world and maybe we don't go there physically but if we can help with prayers and maybe help with some finances or, or maybe help with just get the word out for them it's so important that, because we are touching the world we're touching the world maybe you know we might just go from our house to church and back to our house but if we're if we're praying we're active yeah. amen if we're if 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 we're honoring God by saying that we're going to partner in in these missions then we are active in this and we have an obligation to pray. And we have an obligation to stand behind them. Stand behind them in what they do. Uh, so thank you guys so much. So we're going to talk about confidence today. And our impact word. And how we're going to impact this community. And how we're going to impact our families. And how we're going to uh, impact our lives. We're going to have some confidence. And I want to talk about confidence. And um, you know because... So many times I've put my confidence in myself, and I wanted to think that, you know, if I'm confident, if, if I can rely on Mark, everything's going to be okay. But it doesn't work, because things let us down, some people let us down, it's kind of like the, the vacuum salesman, that, you know, everything's not in control, right? So he goes, this vacuum salesman goes up to somebody's house, and just as soon as the lady opens the door, he pours out the dirt right there. He said, ah, if this vacuum won't pick up every bit of this dirt, I'll eat it. I'll eat it right here in front of you. And she said, I don't have any electricity. Here's your spoon. <laughs> Some things are out of our control, right? We, we can't control everything. We can't control um, uh, things that we don't have the influence on. Sometimes we get in a plane and we trust that, <laughs> okay, a pilot, can you get me there? I'm going to trust this plane that I'm going to leave and go up 30,000 feet and that nothing's going to break. I'm going to trust my car every time that I turn that key. I'm going to trust that, that conductor on that train. I'm going to trust those things and those people. And we just, we just trust and, and we blindly trust. But sooner or later, some things let us down. Sooner or later, there comes a time in our lives where, wow, that car didn't start and I needed to be at work this morning. That person, man, they really said that about me? It hurts. And no matter how far we take our own strength, sooner or later, our strength's not there. And sometimes we're the person that lets somebody else down. And we put all of our confidence in ourselves, and we put our confidence in our, our portfolios, and our resumes, and our money, and our education. And we think that this is going to get me by. But sooner or later, you're going to realize that the confidence in the things that we acquire, and the confidence in our strength, as big as your guns might be, it's going to let you down. We get older, we start to lose a little bit of hair. Yeah, I, I like some of you guys' haircuts though, you guys are heading in the right direction. Um, we, we, we think that, you know, I've been through a couple of uh, jobs before, so I'm going to get a little bit stronger at this one, so now my ability's going to increase, but yeah, you see the things in your body decreasing, and then you realize, you know what, my strength's not going to take me to heaven. My strength's not going to secure my eternity. My confidence in me is not so confident anymore. And we come in here, and because of that confidence, and it starts to go down, even though we had that impressive resume, we realize that it's not about me. My confidence needs to be in God and what He can do with me. My strength is because of Him. My strength and my confidence 
is because of him. So many times we walk in the church house and we can't rest and we can't be at ease because we know that we've failed. Right? We've failed so many times. Sometimes we come in here and the very word that we hear week after week after week, it, it, it goes, I, I can't live up to that. And I failed and, and I'm not the father that I was supposed to be this week. I'm not the husband that I could have been this week. I'm not the worker. I'm not the steward for God that I should have been this week. And we condemn ourselves in our hearts. And God's saying, no, I've overcome your heart. And we're going to look at that scripture. If you'd put it up for us, Pat. I want you to think about this scripture. This is, this is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. And I started with that this morning. I want your hearts to be at rest. This is how. Whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And receive from him anything we ask because we obey his commands and do what pleases him. You know, as we look at this today, I want us to realize that when we talk about, you know, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, that's where our confidence is going to come from. When we know our confidence is through God and in God and our strength is because of God, that's when we can come in here instead of being defeated Christians and read the word and hear what the pastors have to say and then all of a sudden we're guilty, guilty, guilty because I'm not witnessing maybe like, like brother or sister so and so or I, I didn't give enough and we've convicted ourselves and we've condemned ourselves. I want us to realize coming here no matter what we think of ourselves our heart might be lying to us and God is greater than our heart. My confidence is in him. And sometimes I do. I come in here and I think, wow, man, they're doing such a good job. And I'm, doing, I'm going through a hard time in my life. So what happens? We, we, we go, I just can't do it. I'm not going to be able to go to the Walmart and witness. And I'm not going to go door to door because it's, I just can't do that right now. And we start condemning ourselves. We put limitations on ourselves. We say, I'm guilty, I'm guilty, I'm guilty. I'm not teaching like I should be. Or the word that the pastor read a couple of weeks ago, I'm out of control. I can't do this. And every day we'll come in here and we'll try to line ourselves up and we will fall short every single time. But God's saying, that's okay. You're going to fall short. Remember, your heart's going to say that you're not in the right spot sometimes and, and you're not giving like you should or you're not teaching like you should or you're not using your stewardship like you should. But God's saying, I've overcome your heart. Don't let you condemn yourselves. If you're one of mine, I've got you. And we're going to grow. You know, so many times I say, when, when I talk about Job, I, I'm not like his wife who said, well, why don't you just curse your God and die? But it's a growth thing, right? Uh, you know, his wife was, just, just curse him and die. But Job was saying, though he's, yet he would slay me, though he'd say, slay me, yet will I serve him. So it's like there's two different levels, and we're climbing that level. But too many times people come in here, and they've failed, or they've not, been the Christian that they know that they could be and they've had limitations because maybe you have circumstances in your life or what have you but all of a sudden you start to withdraw from church a little bit, right? Because you see those super Christians but you don't know what's going on in their lives. Maybe God has blessed them at that time to do a service that you can't do right now because you're still in growth mode or you, you don't have the confidence for it yet and you're just growing but yet you come in here and you see what they do and then you think, I'm a failure. I can't do this. I can't live up to their standards. I can't sing like that. I can't teach like that. I don't have the time to do all this stuff because I got to work. And we start to say, I'm not good enough. And we put the limitations on us. And that's our heart. And sometimes it's a lying heart. That's what this word says. And it's saying, God has overcome that heart. It's his strength, not yours. Your confidence needs to be in him. You need to know he can overcome this. You are not guilty, guilty, guilty. We are not condemned. We are not condemned. I think we said it in prayer this morning. There is therefore now no condemnation for those in Christ. I am born again because I believe in Jesus. He's accepted me into his kingdom. Because I've asked for his forgiveness. I'm in. And I'm going to fail. 
And I might let you down, and things might let you down, and other people might let you down. But this scripture want us, wants us to have confidence. So you know what? When you don't think that you can do as good a job at so-and-so, or you don't have the strength or the tools maybe to go out and just blindly witness to somebody, God's saying, I'm here. This is my strength. This is not your strength. Trust me. Trust me. Believe in me. When I think of a confidence, here's the words that came up. Trust, faith, belief, assurance, certainty. When you're out there and you're saying, Hi, can I tell you about Jesus? Those things that come to your mind? No. You're thinking of, Slap in the face. Tell me to leave. Make fun of me. Here's, here comes the jokes. But I want us to have confidence and faith in what we're doing. And maybe we're not doing things to the standard that we see other people doing it. But God's saying, Some of you guys are in the growth period. And we're getting there. We're moving the right direction. And just because you're not up to so-and-so's, let's keep going forward. Don't come into the church house and hear a sermon saying, that's it, I'm done. I can't do what these people do. What do they take, super Christian pills or something? I can't do this. Because every one of us will leave and will think, wow, that's a standard that I just can't hit. But we are growing in the grace. You get that? We're growing it. We're continually growing in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I love that because sometimes I need to realize, and, and look, I told you guys probably a hundred times, I have been up here because I, I fail. I fail all the time. And every time I read this thing, every time I stand up here and get ready to, to, to minister, I think, wow, God, put up the perfect example. Um, if they don't get this, and some of us, we don't even want to let people know that we have some issues and some faults. So we're not going to say anything, but I have failed. I bet you guys have failed in certain spots. Kyle was just up here saying, you know what, some people were talking and he should have been praying for him. But he failed. You will fail. And God wants us to know that, you know what, his strength. When our hearts say, you're a failure, he's saying, no, you're not. You're still covered by the blood. You are still covered by the grace so don't let your heart condemn you. We're, we're going through this. Yesterday is gone. Don't even have to worry about it. Let's get better from it. Don't let your heart condemn you. God is greater than your heart. And sometimes our heart and our mind say, no, 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 no. And we're scared. And we're living in fear. We're a slave to that fear, right? I love that because they were going to sing that for me this morning. They were like, no, 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 let's sing it. I said, no, it's, it fits my sermon so well. Even if it's for me, preach it. And then I see Dave look over and says, Luke, you going to sing it? And Luke goes, nope. <laughs> I'm like, here you go, Dave. He was up. And fear. He overcame the fear. He just started singing, right? And I, and I was thinking about this because I, I, I was reading examples on confidence this week and the one that hit me the most and maybe you'll get it from this is when they were building the Golden Gate Bridge in 1933 to 1937 and maybe you guys have heard this story before but the first half of that build there was 12 men that fell to their death they fell to their death so they said okay that's enough you're not going to build anymore until you stop and you put some sort of safety barrier down there so they spent $100,000, and they put a net, a big safety net under it. So the last half of the build, there were actually another six guys that fell, but that net spared their lives. And, but the thing about this story that, that tells the most is, not only did the net save their lives, but because they put up that net, they were 25% more efficient. Maybe some of you business guys get that. That means productivity went up. Because they had some confidence and some security and some trust that they knew that they weren't going to fall to their death. They knew that, wow, even if I do work harder, faster, smarter, and I make a mistake, I'm, I'm going to be okay. Because that net will save my life. Christians, God's grace is that net for us. We can work harder. We can afford to take a few mistakes. You know what? When they, when they made a mistake up here today, it's okay. God's grace is still there, amen? Didn't hurt us a bit, did it? 
Instead of saying, I will never get up there because I will make a mistake. I'll turn red, pass out, whatever it's going to be. I am not going to do anything for the Lord because I might make a mistake. Well, what if you got over that fear and you knew that grace was stronger than you and you knew that God can overcome our heart, that I am going to try this. I'm going to do the things that God wants me to do. I'm going to step out on the limb and if the limb breaks, God's grace will catch me. Do you believe that? God's grace is better and bigger and stronger and more powerful than our hearts. But so many times we come in here and we do. We try. And I want, us, I want this word to confirm us or convict us. But when it convicts us, it needs to turn us in the right direction. And not just shut us down and saying, I can't do it. I couldn't live this law. Could you live that Old Testament law? It was Jesus. Jesus did the work. Because he knew we would fail. He was the perfect sacrifice because we couldn't do this. His power, his strength, his might, not ours. And so many times we think of these, these, these people in the Bible that um, are, are big time patriarchs. And, and Pastor Mark, you just don't understand because I failed and I failed and I failed and God can't use me and I'm not going to step out on a limb. I can't do this. But I'll come to church and honor God and I'll give him my two hours a week and, I, and I'll go back home. But I can't do what these other people are doing. I just don't have it in me. So I got a little list that, uh, that Pat's going to put up here and I'm going to read some of these. And you read some of these if you can see it. But I want to show you some people who had some problems in the Bible that God overcame some things for them, right? Noah was a drunk. Isaac was a daydreamer. Jacob was a liar. Leah was ugly. Joseph was abused. Moses... Had a stuttering problem. Gideon was afraid. Rahab was a prostitute. Elijah was, a, was suicidal. Jonah ran from God. And on and on and on and on and on and on. Tell me which one of you are worse than that. God can use you. And you need to have confidence that God can use you. And look at this one. This is my favorite one. Uh, Lazarus was dead. When I read that I was thinking, Wow. It seems like, I know Christians aren't dead, but people are living dead. I know that marriages, they might still be married. And they're, it's not dead on paper, but it seems like their marriage is kind of dead. It seems like certain parts in our lives are dead. And I want you, by the authority of God's word, to know that God can bring your marriages, your situation, your relationships back to life. God overcame this. When, when Elijah was there just saying, take my life, God overcame his heart that said, I just want to die. This is not going to work. God's the one that overcomes us. We need to have our confidence, not in us, not in our power, not in our portfolio, but God. And then when we fail, thanks for the grace, Nat, God. Still growing in it. Sometimes we have to test what our, what our abilities can be and find out and see if it's of God. And then when we fail, we realize, hey, maybe that wasn't from God. I'm going to try a different path. Maybe I wanted to be a teacher, but it just wasn't me. And I found that out. That's okay. I'm going to try something else because God wants me to do something. And God has overcome this world. He's our strength. Our confidence is in Him. In Him. And this morning when I was talking about how can we set our hearts at rest in His presence, this is how we do it. We have the confidence in Him. And some of you guys, you have the second part of that verse down that we read this morning. Um, and it says, Dear friends, if our heart is not, condemned, is not condemned to us, we have confidence before God. We have confidence before God. And it doesn't just end there with the confidence. Put up that next scripture again, please. And receive from him anything we ask. Because we obey his commands. And do what he pleases. Wow. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if you guys believe in that in just a few minutes here. And I'm trying to squeeze in a few notes. Uh, we took a little bit longer this morning. I thought, it's more like a Pastor Mike saying. But I still have a couple more pages to go here. But in a few minutes... I'm going to see if you believe that. I'm going to, in just a few minutes, I'm going to have the, the singers come up and I'm going to have the people that believe that if you have confidence in God, that things can happen. And I'm going to ask those people 
that, that are down and out and sick and afflicted, they're going to come up here and I'm going to see if they believe this and we are going to, before God and his presence, we're going to take him up on this because we have confidence in him. And we are boldly, boldly going to go th before the throne of God and say, God, take care of this sickness, take care of this cancer, take care of these marriage problems, these financial problems. God, give me the confidence that I need. God, help me step out in the places and stop, stop, stop being a, a, a fear or a slave to fear. I don't want us to be a slave to fear anymore. Sometimes the messages are hard and we say, okay, we've got to get out there. We've got to do more. We've got to give more. We've got to... And, and we don't mean it like, if you don't do this, go back home and try again. Pray harder. We mean, trust God. If he's given us some ability, let's use the ability. But I, th I believe fa Pastor Mike could say the same thing. We fail too. We fail. Don't let the failures stop you. Because this world, sometimes it comes us in the wrong direction. And maybe we've tried. We thought we were that great witness. And then somebody started telling jokes about us. And it hurt. And we felt like we failed. But let's let God have the control. Let's not have our confidence in us. These big guns are only going to carry me for a while. And we all are laughing at that. Brad can't contain himself over there. He knows that there's no strength in here. I got the perfect body to watch basketball on TV. <laughs> but I'm going to work with what God's given me. Remember, I started off as a Baptist. We learned how to eat fried chicken in a hurry. It's caught up with me. But with the tools I have... And when I do start to lose some hair, and when I do start to not see as well as I used to, and maybe when I can't teach or preach or sing, maybe because I'm getting a little older, God, where can you use me now? Do you want me to send cards to people? Do you want me to call somebody and just give them an encouragement? I want us to keep working with the tools that we have. And if you feel a little less confident right now, I want you to read these. And remember where this is at in 1 John chapter 3. And believe that you are an overcomer. And sometimes it's overcoming ourselves. Because we've lied to us. My mind says I can't because that battlefield is going back and forth. And every scenario I see, I lose. God says, I'm bigger than that. My heart says, no, it's going to hurt. They're going to make fun of me. And God says, no, I've overcame your heart. The flesh lies to us, but he knows the, the battle of that flesh and that spirit is going to stay going and going and going and going on. But he's saying, I've overcome that flesh. It can go back to the dirt. We're going to resurrect the spirit through Jesus Christ. You believe that this morning? Yes. I, mean, I, I really want you to grab a hold of this confidence because it's something that we lack. We, we do, we leave here sometimes and we think, man, I, I can't do that. I can't do that. How can I make an impact in the community? I'm not making an impact at home right now. How can, how can my finances be in disarray and I'm supposed to make an impact? How can, how can these things be going on in, in my job and me make an impact? We're going to turn that over to God and say, God, I have confidence in you. I'm going to try to live this, and God, I'm going to fail. And I'm going to trust your grace to catch me every time. And I'm going to keep coming back in here and starting off this week right. And on Sunday, God, no matter what happened last Sunday through last Saturday, and no matter how many times I might fail, God, help me maybe not fail as much this week because my confidence is going to be you and not me anymore. Because there's going to be times where I'm going to let you down, I'm going to let my family down, I'm going to let me down. And there's going to be things that are out of my control. And that pilot's not going to be able to fly the plane that day because of whatever. Or there's going to be, we're going to be stuck on the runway because something's broken. Or I'm going to be in my life and something's going to happen at work that is just out of my control. Couldn't help losing a the job, they, they cut back. Right? And saying, God, I am no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. 
and your grace. Your grace is my safety net. And my confidence is in you, not in me. I want you to think about that. Because the enemy will come at you every different way. He'll know your every weakness. You know, I, I always tell the wrestling story because I used to coach wrestling. But when my son was wrestling, we knew the, in it, we knew the opponent. We knew what they liked to do. We, we got to know them more than they wanted to get to know because we knew what moves that they were going to go after next. If it was an ankle pick or whatever, we knew. So, we got to know the enemy. And you better believe that Satan's got to know you a little bit. He might know some of your weaknesses. Those TV shows might pop up right when you're alone and you shouldn't be watching them. And he's going to put those temptations. And we're going to say, God, you're greater than this. And you know the enemy. God, help me. Help me understand my weaknesses and help me get stronger without saying, God, I just can't do this. Help me realize that you're my strength and my confidence is not in me, but in you. Singers, will you come, please? And you don't have to come down at the altar, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have maybe a little altar call here or just a, just a prayer call as they start singing. But I want you to think about this. And if, and if you're going to stay at your seats, think about the last part of that verse. He's going to do what we ask because what? We have confidence. We have confidence that he's going to do what we're going to ask. Will you put that last verse up one more time, Pat? We need to get this. And we'll receive. You can go ahead to the last one. And we'll receive from him anything we ask because we obey his commands and do what he pleases. Do you believe you have confidence in him and we're going to obey his commands. And he said, and James, if we call him in front of the elders or with the elders, he'll do this, right? So if you have something on your heart, if you have a request, there's going to be people down here and we'll just come together and we'll pray together and you guys just bust loose for us. Okay, we're having church here. Yeah. He's going to sing one of my songs. I love this song. I love this song because... God has moved in our lives, hasn't He? Do you remember what God has done for you? Do you? I've been held by the Savior. I'm held by that Savior. Remember where God has brought you from? I far from Keep in mind what He's going to take you to. Amen? If you've got a prayer, if you've got an affliction, if your marriage is in trouble, if your finances are struggling, whatever it is, it's nobody else's business, just come down here and give it to God. And then it's His business. He can take care of it. Oh, I want you to have the confidence. Jesus. Pastor Mike, you can't stand up here. I want you to just fill it around. God, we're going to pray for that. We're going to boldly go before the throne of God. Gone. And we're going to thank God that yesterday is gone because we failed Him yesterday. Oh, my sins are and He is our grace. He's our safety net. You want to come, come. If you don't want to come, I'm going to pray for you anyway. You might as well come. Boldly go before the throne of God and have His confidence. Anybody at all? This is your option. Who has wore those shackles and chains? I've been freed and forgiven. The shackles and chains are in my mind. That's what we're talking about, in my heart. The shackles and chains says, Mark, you can't do this. You're not a good speaker. The shackles and chains. Oh, Moses said, Lord, I stutter. The shackles and chains. Where Jonah said, I'm going the other direction. The shackles and chains where I was a prostitute before I can't do this. We have put blinders on our walk, but God has overcome insecurity. He's overcome our failures. Because I've been washed by the blood. I've been washed by the blood. Those of you who know a word of prayer, as these people come up, please pray for them. You might not know their situation, but I'm trusting in that scripture right there. And we've got some people that we need to be praying for. Our brother Steve, you know how much he, he loves and cherishes this church. And I guarantee you, he'd rather be here today. And he's battling this cancer, and I need the church warriors to believe that prayer can be answered. And go to him in prayer for Steve. I need us to bring up Clem on behalf of the church. And really for the, on behalf of, of, of this church. God, we're laying this down at your throne because we're trusting in you. These families are hurting. But it's easy.
disease of cancer is devastating. And I've lost, I've lost people to cancer. I lost my dad to cancer. Believe me, I wanted people praying for me at that time. But it may not have ended in that situation the way Mark wanted it to end. But I knew there were a lot of pastors coming over and praying and talking with him. I knew that he was getting the word that he needed to hear. I knew that he was feeling the security of God's grace net. Sometimes it doesn't always go our way, but if we just get handed to God, it'll go the right way. Anybody else this morning? All right, we're going to pray for everybody. Heavenly Father, gracious Lord, Holy Spirit, God, on the authority of your word, you've overcame our hearts. You've overcame our limitations that we set on ourselves. You've overcame those times where we've convicted ourselves and condemned ourselves and said, no, you're one of mine. So God, on the authority of your word, I pray that you would touch every person that comes down and every person who wants to come down, but they're sitting at their seat right now. God, I just pray that you would just touch them. God, I pray that you would work in their lives. God, I pray that like Lazarus, you'd bring their relationship with you back from the dead. I pray that you'd bring their marriages back from the dead, their finances back from the dead, their health back from the dead, God. Because only you can move like that. And God, you said that you've overcome our hearts. And God, we're calling upon this because we believe that you can answer prayer. Because now we're going to lean on that confidence. And we're going to come in here and it says our hearts could be at peace because we have confidence in you. So God, as I'm battling this storm, help me remember that you've, you've went through the storm before for me. you brought me through. God, I thank you so much for everyone that's here today. And I thank you for allowing us to realize that we're not perfect here. We're not super Christians. Not one of us are super Christians. But God, we're all grown in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Father, I pray as we leave here, we realize that our first failure, and some people won't even make it to the door before the thoughts come in. And if we were looking for a fault, we found one. But God, your Holy Spirit would just say, no, I'm going to overcome these things. And your word tells me that you're stronger than my stinking thinking. Father, I love you and I pray for a hedge of protection around every every home represented today. I, I pray for our children back there. I pray for the teachers. I pray for the missions and the ministries that we got going on here. I pray for Oscar and Jenny. I pray for Maya. I pray that God that your will would be done and you would be glorified in your work. So Father, as we depart here today, God, I pray that it's your will, not mine. God, I pray that as we talk about making an impact for this community, that people would no longer say, I can't because. And we would realize that, you know what? I'm going to have confidence and I'm going to try this because of your grace, your safety net, your protection. And maybe our efficiencies will go up a little bit, always remembering that you've overcame my mistakes. So Father, I thank you for the the music that was played today, the words that were spoke, the testimony. God, I thank you for, for you. God, you were so wonderful. You were so awesome. And I have failed you so many times. But you're still here for me. And you still love me. And your word has told me that again today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And one more time. God, if you can be for me, who can be against me? (laughs) If you can be for us, who can be against us? If you can be for my marriage, who can be against it? If you can be for for my job, my family, who can be against it? God, if you're in control, you're in control. And today, confidence in you. 
Heavenly Father, deliver us all home safely and give us a wonderful weekend. And we praise you and honor you today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys so much. Uh, I just uh, I, I just want it to be on your heart. There are a lot of people that are hurting. There's a lot of people that that don't want to just come in here and openly talk about all the things we got going on in our lives and how many times have we failed. But if you're like me, you have failed. Keep praying. Keep praying for people. Keep lifting them up. And we're going to get through some of these battles. And God's going to be right there with us the whole time. Go with God. He loves you. Thank you.